everybody welcome to like i said an intro very special episode now before we get started if you're looking for kind of a more traditional episode this is not going to be for you because this episode is primarily going to be a meeting with the leos about uh gang task force uh but if you're interested to know especially if you want to apply for the sift side this really gives you an idea that's why i wanted to put it in here because i like to show the back end stuff but this gives you an idea of um our gang task force, what gangs we have in the state, all of that stuff. So we're actually having a physical meeting uh, in Davis Station since it's BCSOs. But we're also um, we're also going to be talking in Discord because it's going to be easier and all that. So there's a few cars I already see rolling up to the station as we speak. We should be up there shortly. Should have had this meeting going. I think it's about 15 members going to come. This meeting, however, is not mandatory. We do have mandatory meetings. This meeting is optional. So if the guys um, want to show up to it, great. They don't want to show up to it, they don't have to. Obviously, if they do show up to it, it helps them understand our gang culture in the state. Because um, gang task force is, is a is a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Very somewhat conclusive, inclusive, let's just say, uh, department. So there they are. And we should be here. We should let's see if we're ready a few cars, yep. So we're ready a few cars. God, how did you fuck your car up already? Be an extra with all this. Okay, everybody. Oh, there's Mr. CST. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get it started. Thank you, like I said, for make, taking the time out to come to this meeting. We're going to be talking about a few things here in a second. I'm going to start a presentation. Uh, and uh, we'll go after that right from here to patrol. So appreciate you guys. Obviously, you guys have a, a good interest in the meeting, but also... Uh, and making sure our our county and our state are as smooth as possible. Okay, let's go ahead and start streaming this. Bam. All right, everybody should be clicking on it and seeing it. Okay, so thank you once again and welcome to the meeting. Today's meeting is going to be um, hosted by the Blaine County Sheriff's Office Subdivision Gang, Gang Task Force right now. As you know, in the future, the Gang Task Force is going to be similar to the Drug Task Force. It's going to be a shared subdivision between LSPD and BCSO where we have the same SOP, same protocols. Uh, so that's what the meeting is hosted today. We plan on launching it pretty soon. We're going to be talking about the meeting summary. We're going to be talking about the status of the gangs in San Andreas. We're going to be doing intel on known gang members so far. Um, jailing process for gang members. New intel regarding the Familia Varagas. The war between uh, Familia Varagas and Santos and what we need from you. All right. So now we start off and go to the next section of it. Set of gangs. Right now, we have two known gangs and one that is rumored to try to establish a connection to San Andreas. The first gang and the strongest gang, as far as firepower and tactics, is the Familia Varagas, which a lot of you guys are pretty similar, familiar, familiar with if you've been here for a while. If not, then that's who they are. We know Familia Varagas, which we'll just say FV from now on. We know FV has switched their roles in the last couple of years than what they used to be. Jesus Varagas, who's the head, is taking more of a backseat role than before. With deaths to all four of his kids, it seems sometimes rules that he lived by go out the window. We will talk more about the members of FV and the new intel in just a second. The second gang is the Santos gang. They're the new kids on the block, uh, and they are notorious for being a pack of coyotes, and I'll explain that and what that means in just a second. Meaning they only attack if they have numbers. We're not sure what the ultimate identity is yet because they're fairly new, but we do know they don't consider themselves a typical quote-unquote gang, meaning they don't exactly have ranks. They are the biggest gang as far as numbers in the state. Now, what I mean by the Viragas has uh, switched the roles back. Uh, me and uh, uh, Mason Park has been intel in the past because he worked with us. And um, Lieutenant Pearson, uh, I believe uh, Corporal Trick, those are the people that have worked um, or had to deal with the family of Viragas even outside of this city. Um, they used to be very low-key. They don't even want you to know that they're Viragas. They used to be just very, very, very low-key. 
Seems their identity has slowly but surely switched to more, really more aggressive and really more in your face if they have to. Now, they're not flashy, but they will be in your face if they have to. Now, what we mean by like Santos or Pancha Coyotes is the fact that uh, based on what we notice, what they do so far over and over and over and over again, they only attack in numbers and they will attack you kind of in the back. You know, a coyote would not attack you solo. They usually attack as packs. So that's what we notice with the Santos gang. Uh, what we notice with the Santos gang, ironically enough, is they tend to be more aggressive and more outspoken with Leos than they are with other gang members, which is very, very interesting because it's usually the other way around. So that's what we have. Before we continue, if you have any questions, um, just wait between slides. I don't want to keep asking if you have questions. So if you have questions, let me know that you have questions or not. So we're going to be talking about the Familia Varagas profile. We're going to be breaking down each member here. Now let's talk a little bit about the profile. As we stated earlier, the Familia Varagas profile, the head of the organization is Jesus Varagas, who already lost all four of his kids in shootouts with police. They specialize in selling cocaine, which is, again, a new profile for them because in the past they only used to specialize in selling weapons. Their territory right now is unknown. We don't know exactly where they operate, but we do believe they operate statewide, but they are very protective in particular to the Sonora Valley area, that being Sandy Shores, Harmony, and Grape Seed. Ironically, as organized as they are, they still don't have a set way to determine if they have a dress code or not. Lately, we have been seeing more black and gray on them, but we haven't really had a set way of how they dress. They kind of let everybody dress the way they want to dress to some extent. Maybe it's just kind of their old school identity of kind of hiding in plain sight, if you will. Now, this is a very important ta uh, point number four. The initi initiation induction to the gang seems to be by kidnapping a Leo and then jumping them. And then Jesus seems to give the new members of the organization with a Yukon. Now, when they kidnap a Leo, they don't really shoot him or anything like that. They kidnap him, take radios, take body cams off. They jump the Leo, leave him, take pictures of it, then leave. We had a deputy here that's uh, not with us anymore. He actually transferred departments. Um, his name was Deputy Wol Worldstar for the reason that he got jumped by the family of Varagas and they um, uh, recorded it. I believe, not to bring up past traumas, I believe Skyler here also got jumped, uh, got kidnapped and jumped by them. That's just their way that they initiate somebody into their gang. Um, they're very hard to get information out of. They will more than likely either act oblivious or plead the fifth when interrogated. So uh, I'm pretty sure uh, Chief Parker here is pretty familiar with their tactics where they just act completely stupid and you end up being very, very frustrated and they got you where they want you. Or they're just going to plead the fifth. Um, they are reported to have military-grade weapons, and they also specialize in selling weapons to people that they don't seem as an issue for them. Uh, weapons go as far as that um, mounted gun on a pickup that we saw that got blown up. We still don't know why it got blown up, who blew it up, etc. But that seems to be an issue there. And they seem to be more paranoid and less trustworthy even than before, as of recently uh, we believe they murdered a former member that is a Michael Joseph because he was seen hanging out with the Santos and committing actually crimes with the Santos, but there wasn't enough evidence where Lieutenant Pearson could have charged that individual. So they are just murdered one of their own members, okay? Uh, paranoid more than usual. Uh, Jesus, after losing four of his kids, I think is a little bit on edge these days. So let's take a, let's take a look at their member profiles. We, talk, we got Jesus Varagas. We know his street name is Tanque. That really means tank. Um, one of the things that Seuss has stated is more of a management role now than out in the field. You probably won't see him as much. If you do see him, it's probably going to mean somebody's getting hit. Um, obviously, we cannot stalk him. We cannot uh, violate his rights. He is innocent and proven guilty. Additionally, Jesus now has gray hair. This is the older picture that we have in our system. Uh, second point you need to know is that one we experienced this firsthand. Once he thinks things personal, he really takes them personal. Um, so try, if you do encounter him, try not to get on personal levels or make comments that would personally attack him because once it's personal, he really goes all out. Once triggered, he is very unpredictable and for the most part, he isn't out and about, like we said before. Be cautious. He will sweet talk you and manipulate you to doing things you shouldn't be doing. That's his MO. He's done it before. He's done it to high ranks. He's done it to low ranks. He will play the innocent grandpa. He will play the concerned dad. He will play the concerned uncle. Just know he will try to manipulate you if he can see um, there's a way out of it. And his usual hangout spots are the casino, the pier, and his house. He's not really out about as much anymore. Next up, we got this handsome, ugly devil here is Alonzo Mendez. The street name we know is Zo. Alonzo rapidly became the right hand man for Jesus after the death of Antar. Antar is Jesus' son. He is very highly unpredictable. You can have him on a traffic stop. Sorry, I have a typo there, but you can have him on a traffic stop where he's nice and then next thing you know, um, he, can, he can come out the car with an assault rifle. He's done that many times. Alonso, Alonso is the definition of a predator. 
If he senses weaknesses in you, he will lash onto you. And if he senses you're a new cop, he will test you to see if you deserve his respect. So keep that, especially for the newer cops. I've we've had cops in the past who were talking shit, literally first day talk shit to this guy. They got clapped. We don't want that. Okay. Respect this guy is definitely earned, not given. But once you manage to have him respect you, chances of him complying with you goes much higher. And I need to emphasize on that point. Once he feels like he can respect you, that he's not your friend, he, he doesn't see you as his friend, he just understands you have a job to do, and he understands you understand he has a job to do as well. So meaning, if he's quartered in and he respects you, he will pull a gun on you and shoot you. He's not going to be like, oh, I respect this guy, I'm not going to shoot him. He will do just that. Like we stated before, he very unstable, uh, murdered his wife um, two months ago, you would say, uh, for calling the cops uh, once. And if he has you in sight and wants you, he's in stopping, even the cops are there. So be very careful with dealing with this guy. Next up we have is Brian Hernandez. We don't have a better picture of him. We try to look. Um, his street name is Fitty. Brian is the newest member of Familia Varagas. He will not initiate anything without orders from Jesus. So rest assured from anything unpredictable. He is not really very unpredictable unless he has to run away. So that's the second point. He runs away a lot. And he will try to escape custody even after he is cuffed. That means there's no, I'm going to let you walk to the door. Hey, you know, let's go inside. No, he will try to run away every single chance he gets. He reminds me of a husky or golden shepherd. It can be your friends for 10 years. But if you take him out to pee and he sees a hole in the fence, he will try to get away. That's just what, that's what he does. Last we know, based on what uh, Vargas did to Michael Joseph, is he, that he is on thin ice with Jesus because he was also seen hanging out with the Santos. A confidential informant uh, informed us in the past that Jesus has kneecapped him before, and that's Jesus' way of punishing someone before killing them. That's just basically saying, I'm about to kill you, so he'll shoot you in the kneecap. He is respectful for the most part, especially if he knows you. Uh, we believe he is appointed by Jesus to be the drug runner for now, so you will see this guy as the guy that does the drugs for them. Next up we got is Kane Holloway, street name Hollow. Now Kane is also a newer member within the Varagas. He and Alonzo seem to have a common chemistry, which is fuck anyone that isn't familiar with Aragas and excuse my French. This guy is highly unpredictable, and he will try to push your buttons with verbal assault. That's just what he does every single time you have him. He will talk shit to you. He will hit you on all angles. That's just his MO. That's what he does. A lot of them will try to get under your buttons to have you do something stupid so they can have the law on their side now, and they become the victims and not the, uh, the suspects. Jesus seems to assign him the missions where he needs to be quick in and out. Rest assured, he will be usually paired with either Fiddy or Zo, but more than likely Zo. Unlike the other two, he has a, the knack to start trouble on his own whenever business is slow. This guy does not respect other gang members whatsoever. He is not going to turn a blind eye. If he sees them on the same street, he will talk shit to them. And if they talk shit back, he will shoot them. He is notorious for getting away and succeeding at it. If you're in a 1080 with him, bring your A game because he will get away. He shouldn't, some, the cars they got is not going to be faster than our cars. They shouldn't get away. So that's uh, so far the, the stuff we have in the Varagas and the profile. Any questions so far in the Varagas? All right, perfect. Next up, we have the Santos profile. Now, Santos, they specialize in selling meth. That is their drug. Lately, they have been seen more, to uh, more out towards Palito Bay, making us think they might have a stash house or farmhouse up there. We're not sure yet. Their headquarters that we suspect, and that was easily to pick up on because they always park in there and do whatever the hell they need to do in there, is the 9104 Grove Street. Um, they are a flashy gang, and they cannot keep quiet even if they tried. And the reason I mentioned that to you, if you do have a Santos member in custody, if you don't come at him in a direct way and you try to get information out of it, you will probably succeed. It does not take much to have these guys talk. Trust me. I mean, these guys literally affiliated themselves when we didn't even have any damn clue. At one point, we caught two of them, said, you only caught two of us. There's other two people that are doing drugs. Guess what we did? We got the other two because we didn't even know there were four people selling drugs. Just to give you examples. Uh, we do know that they started a war with the family of Aragas based on social media posts and retracted quickly, but recent events tell us that the war with the FV is not done yet. They were the ones that were responsible for robbing the Pacific Bank and successfully stashed the money even though we were able to apprehend them a short time later. Their colors are usually black and blue, uh, yellow. Unlike the Varagas, they usually stick to certain color code. Um, and they don't, have, they don't have a rank system based on what we observed in interrogations before, but that makes it very, very interesting for us on how the orders and missions get handed out. Um, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. Official members also can be seen with a cursive-like S tattoo on the left side of their neck. 
And instead of cursive, like, I guess that we can use the word old English type of S tattoo on their neck. Now, we go back to the second to last point where they don't seem to have a rank system making it very interesting. Um, any criminal organization is kind of free will and nobody needs to answer to anybody. That makes them a little bit more recklessly dangerous. So if they don't have a rank system, we got issues. If they don't have lines that they can't cross with their leader, we have issues as Leo. And these guys are notorious, like I said, for attacking you in the back. They will attack you. Um, they are the only ones this tell right now that try to shoot at Air One um, and actually successfully hit it three times. Now we take a look at members' profile. We got Carlos Juarez. We don't know what his nickname is. Um, he goes by Carlos Juarez. Uh, if we start to have an idea of why the Santos are flashy and talk a lot, then you can look at their leadership. This guy is very, very flashy. Usually the latest cars, colors that pop. I mean, this guy pulled a car in front of me just yesterday or the other day, knowing that he knows that he has a suspended driver's license. You know, then put one-on-one -on -one together. These guys, I guess, just, I guess they're flashy. Carlos is the head of the Santos, even though they technically have no ranks. I don't know how that works, but that's our job to find out in a second. Uh, very sneaky when it comes to Leos. He will turn around and shoot uh, in a second and shoot you. Very predictable and even easier to get information out of them. The predictability in that sense is that usually their pursuits are trying to get a familiar area to go on foot. Every single time they've been in a pursuit with us in the last two weeks, they have been trying to go in a, fami uh, in a, in a familiar area and, um, and, and bail out in 1070. If he approach you after a drug ping, he will more than likely flee because they're that's what they do. They sell drugs. And his favorite hangout spots happen to be Grove Street, La Mesa's parking garage, which I've seen him there a lot, and Polito Bay. That's Carlos Suarez. We believe he's, uh, or not believe, we know he's a quote-unquote leader of the Santos. Next up, we got a Jack Juan Harris. Again, nickname's unknown. Unbeliev unbelievably the, an epitome of a self stitching machine. From our interactions with him, he even overshares, which is good for us. Once again, him and Carlos specifically, they really just don't can't keep quiet. You know, um, one, sometimes I really was very close to advising them. I'm like, I'm not your lawyer, but I would really suggest you, you, you plead the fifth right now because they just keep talking. So that's good for us. Let them keep talking. His style has always uh, show, uh, shown run, go to familiar area, bail out on foot, like we talked about, similar to Carlos Suarez. The only one from the gang who attempted to shoot down Air One approaches approach cautiously. Um, 34 felonies. The guy is not really the brightest bulb in the... Or the sharpest knife in a drawer, let's just say. Um, dealing with criminals that are not really sharp adds more element of danger for you as, a, as an authority. So keep that in mind. Next thing that we have is I'm Dylan Gregory. Uh, we don't know much about Dylan Gregory besides that he is a very good driver. Every time I've been a 1080 with him, you almost have to do everything perfectly. Otherwise, he will get away. He's a really, 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 really good driver. Um, that's what he does. He doesn't have the fastest cars, but he's really good at what he does. Once again, not too much information regarding him. He does seem to have to be uh, the more timid side of the Santos. We, knew that, we notice he's not usually a quote-unquote self-starter when it comes to gang missions. And we also notice he's not as close to Carlos as others may be. We barely even see him ride, uh, riding in the same car together. So, But we could be wrong. Um, if somebody has any information on him right now, um, I'll stay quiet for a little bit. If you have information on Dylan Gregory that you can share with us, go for it. Nobody? All right. All right. Next up we got is a Joseph Sear. Again, nickname unknown. Uh, sorry, that's the only picture we can find. I was clear enough with the glasses, but uh, not much is known about him besides he got in a gang with Lavernius Cornwall, which we'll talk about later. Him and Cornwall have a very close relationship, and they used to run solo together before joining the gang. One of these two in particular do not like family of Aragas members since they got shot by him a few times. So um, when Lavernius and Joseph used to run together before they joined the Santos, uh, they got shot down a few times in the Varagas compound. Granted, so they were trespassing, but I, we know that one of their biggest motivations to joining the family of Varagas was to get some type of protection. I don't know how that worked out with them joining the Santos, but regardless, him and this guy are both uh, pretty close. Uh, I don't really have any intel on him, to be honest with you, besides my dealing with him, fits the same profile as the rest of these guys. Self-snitching machine. That's all I can tell you about him. Again, anybody got information on Lavernia Scornwall or Joseph Sear? Uh, LT, I see you lighting up. I don't know if you're speaking, though. I think you might need to disconnect and connect. You talking about me? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Okay. I, I don't know if you're trying uh, to speak. Okay. I mean, not really. Most I can say he's a, he's a, he's a big shit talker. He's going to talk a lot of smack. Um, he's a high head. He'll try and escalate uh, things verbally. So keep that in mind when dealing with him as well. 
that's all I really got for him. That's what he's been like every time I uh, interacted with him. See, I didn't know the hot head part. See, that's why it's good to have this meeting because I, I didn't really deal with him much probably like twice. Uh, all right. So that's what we got for the profiles. Now, new intel. Uh, the Lost MC is making a comeback. We have reports that lead us to believe that a new chapter of the last, uh, for the Lost MC might be making a return to San Andreas sooner than later. We all know about the previous chapter that was here that got single-handedly destroyed by the Varagas for their poor leadership skills. We did have a Lost MC chapter. Um, <laughs> they had a meeting with the Varagas. They decided to shoot the Varagas while they're in a meeting. It was a peaceful meeting. And then the Varagas killed them all in the same night, literally. So... Um, we think there's a new chapter of the Lost MC. I don't know if they're going to call themselves the Lost MC, but we think there's a new chapter coming. What makes this interesting is due to the fact that Lost MC has always put a focus on Polito Bay. In a way, to even set up successfully, they're going to have to go there. Otherwise, FV might have something to say about it because FV is very protective um, over other parts of the county. Now, the reason I mentioned that, this might cause a lot of problems in Polito Bay for us since we are suspecting the Santos have shifted their attention to Polito Bay recently. We generally take it easy on deploying beats and, and beat A, but uh, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when it happens, when the Lost MC does go over to Polito Bay, we would need to change our focus and have more presence in Polito Bay area. Right now, we generally uh, don't assign a specific deputy there unless it's county parks, um, and we have the senior deputies and corporals have emphasis on A, but in the future, that would mean deputies, the deltas and, and, and lower, would actually be assigned beat alpha because I would see a lot of traffic. Now, and the second thing that we do have is bigger than FV. The second reports we have already um, been informed on is that the firepower to FV are the biggest in the state. But recent finance led, uh, led us to believe that Jesus Vargas and or his organization might have another partner that was funding them from the outside. So far, so far, this is all speculation and quote unquote watered down intelligence gathering that we have. However, we can at least link uh, an enterprise from that that goes by JG. E, also known as the Julio Gordo Enterprises, to somewhat have a link with the Varagas. About three and a half months ago, we had a confidential informant by the name of Leo DiNapio, who is now killed, state to us that the Varagas were getting huge shipments of weapons from someone who is bigger than Jesus himself. Based on our recent findings, we believe that can be a Julio Espinaza, a.k.a. Don Gordo. Now, to make that very clear, Don Gordo is not a suspect, nor does he have any record. He is about 70 years old millionaire, or sorry, billionaire based on a, a public financial records. He is also not a resident of the state, but we found blank checks multiple times on Alonzo Mendes, another person named Trevor Chadman, that does raise our curiosity. In this area, I'm actually going to turn the floor to Chief and LT because they actually had more run-ins with the JGE checks and Julio, then us, and actually interrogated him at one point for something else. So if you guys want to shed some light about how this could be connected with uh, with the Varagas. Absolutely. Go, go ahead, Lieutenant. Yeah, no problem. So essentially, there's been multiple interactions with Alonzo where uh, we've taken him into custody. Um, you know, we have a new fine system where if you don't pay your fines, your jail time isn't going to – you're not going to get time served. You're not going to get your sentence cut. Alonzo's always been known to have money with him to be able to pay it. You know, he's associated with Familia Vragas. They have money, whatever. Um, but recently, we've been finding checks uh, from JGE uh, Enterprises. I think it's JGE Enterprises, which is uh, where we're doing a lot of research to figure out exactly who that is. But at the current moment, we do believe that is Don Gordo's company. And they're using that to fund... FV and allow FV to do uh, criminal acts under the name of JGE. And uh, basically when it's brought up to JGE, it's seen as, okay, um, we're going to go ahead and break it down. So say if Alonzo was, was to kill somebody, they're going to go and say, okay, Alonzo was doing this in the act to defend maybe JGE's property or, or JGE's assets. So they can water down his charges and do things like that. So always remember when JGE is to be in play and you see something from that company, always remember to document it. Let's always put that in the evidence because that's going to help us build the case on this whole operation. Because as you see on this slideshow, this says bigger than FV. And I fully believe that it is bigger than FV at the moment. For, for me to hear that uh, Don Gordo is the guy that Jesus Vargas is scared of from Alonzo Mendez means something serious. So whenever we're dealing with JGE, I need all you guys to be on your A game and uh, step up to the plate. Anything else to add, Chief? Yeah, Chief, if you yeah. want to touch base, I know that 
the little mini you guys had together kind of touch base a little bit about that and the findings we found in the car and all that stuff. Yeah, so I was actually going to shed some light on that. So um, what we found from what is possibly correlated is not 100% in the alibi of uh, Julio Cordo Espinaza, but we did find um, there was a Twitch streamer, a YouTube streamer, who stole the car of, obviously, Julio Espinaza. This was taking place sometime in Sandy Shores. So when we had arrived on scene of the stolen vehicle, we found Mr. Espinaza there hanging out at a tavern. Uh, then we recovered his vehicle. The vehicle was a brown, old and colored, uh, or brown, old, uh, colored, old Mercedes. Uh, it was sent on Joshua Road, and it fled towards Polito, crashed out, and had that YouTuber in there. Uh, in which he was arrested. Uh, we searched the trunk and we happened to find rocket launcher and explosives in the vehicle. Uh, and obviously the kid uh, who was driving the vehicle at the time actually did not hold any substantial record that may correlate to these explosives. Instead, it may have drawn back. But Mr. Espinaza told me beforehand that anything that may be in the car is something that does not belong to him. Um, so like I said, we can't incriminate him for whatever was in the car, but we also didn't incriminate the kid who was driving the car. So at the moment, it's a pending investigation, and it was put in the evidence lockup at the Polito Sheriff Station. Additionally, there's also been some other fundings, other weapons, uh, such as heavy machine guns that you guys may have seen from Trevor Chadman if you were on the call at the... Uh, at the almost wooden where uh, wooden house up in El Biro Heights in La Mesa. Uh, some of the weapons that may be there may be correlating to some of the stuff that's been shipped over to the Varagas. And a long time ago, uh, when Sheriff Nolov was speaking about Leo DiNapio, uh, when we first found out about Leo DiNapio, he was hanging around at the Los Santos International Airport towards the back end. Uh, one of the... Uh, areas uh, where all the cargo was kept and he was sent taking some cargo into his blue uh the class a washington and so when we found what parts he took there was um some things that just didn't seem right to take uh additionally we also found out that some of the when we patted him down he ended up having a photo on him and the photo actually linked back to a 1979 photograph that him and Jesus Farragas taken at some point, I believe, I forgot what city it was. Um, I believe it was Vice City that they were in, but they knew each other. Um, and I, we, we, we have a feeling that the parts that are were taken by Leo DiNapio at the time were something for Jesus to possibly to this day be correlated to something involving JGE. Uh, so that's some of the uh, intel that we've gotten on our end. Um, and this has been in the buildup of the past Two to three months by now uh from bcso or from my time as bcso captain to lspd chief thanks gentlemen it's for good information any questions so far about anything all right so now we're gonna kind of touch base a little bit about dtf um since we have a lot of people that are interested in it i'm going to tell you what i'm looking for for dtf dtf is going to break it down into two sections it's going to be the unmarked um uh, not unmarked, under complete undercover work that you guys will have to do. That complete undercover work includes um, you being a, a buyer, etc., so on and so forth. And then D DTF is going to break. My man, are you having a hard time there? I mean, if you guys sit down, you can just stand up. Give me anxiety attack with all the twitching <laughs> over there. Um, so that's, so you got the DTF part. And then the second part of the DTF, like I stated, uh, will be the regular patrolman, where you guys will be patrolling as regular units.